Hello, everyone. Slightly Eccentric from the Slightly Eccentric and Diplomats of Dope show. Pleased to be with you today. Today, I went to... Oops. Look at this. Every time I move, these things are coming out of my ears. i got to find a better system. Then. All right. Mustache, good? Good. Mustache tips are good? Good. Let's get on with the show, shall we? Let me do this before this happens again. I went to my doctor today to get a prescription for my metformin because I'm a type 2 diabetes and I don't use a lot of metformin but I went into the doctor's office and they said well as of a couple of days left you have no longer have a family doctor our family doctor's on return to leave and then she's going into another field of medicine and I said oh okay so we they sent the letter out a couple of weeks ago <clears throat> saying that you know your doctor's retiring and stuff but we had assumed that we would be rolled over in that office to another doctor because there's a couple of different doctors there. And there are doctors there in that office where we used to go that have been dealing with my family as doctors for 30 years, 35 years, close to 40 years, my mom and dad and me. But now all of a sudden, we're left without a doctor. And I didn't know this. This was shocking. And they said, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't have a doctor anymore. It's your responsibility to give me a little piece of paper to phone and register but you don't have a doctor anymore. It was a kind of a shock. So, so, and to be quite honest with you and Frank, I don't really need a doctor except every three months I go down and get my metformin and that's all I have to do. And so my wife needs a doctor more than I do. <clears throat> so I am, I was mildly surprised that all of a sudden we just don't have a doctor. Now, were there letters sent out? Yeah, but to, to just let, say, and they didn't say we were going to be left high and dry, right? They just said, your doctor's retiring. So <laughs> when I said to the woman at the counter, okay, so you understand my, my, my question. My doctor's retiring. And you've got doctors here. And nobody will see me. See, a couple of months ago, all I had to do was phone in and they'd say, oh, well, there's another doctor here. You'll just take your telephone call and he'll give you a prescription for metformin. So we did it over the phone. And we've been doing that for years. If I, if my doctor's not in, then they just, another doctor in there that knows me, you just say, oh, sure, well, we're, we fill Rick's metformin. Apparently now, that does not happen. Doctors will not cross-diagnose, even in the, the same office. So <clears throat> if you're left without a doctor, you're left without a doctor, apparently now. I, I did not know that. So mildly annoying, yes. Uh, a little bit frustrating, sure. But here's the silver lining in the cloud. I'll tell you what a, a medical doctor did to me. Because I, the next doctor I get, I'm going to go shopping for a doctor. It's not the other way around. Now I'm going to interview a doctor for me. I'm just not going to take the first doctor that comes along. I'll tell you why. I used to be on uh, fentanyl. Pretty serious stuff for pain control. And my doctor put me on it, and he could write for fentanyl. There's very few people now that can write for fentanyl. This is back oh, 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 11 years ago. And, uh, no, 11 years ago? Maybe not that long, maybe five years ago. Anyway, <clears throat> he gets me on fentanyl, and it's a patch that I wear on my chest, right? And I have to change it every week or so. And he, at Christmas time, a couple of years ago, I don't remember how many years ago, I walk in to get my fentanyl patch, <laughs> and lo and behold, the doctor has decided to take a six-week holiday to South Africa. Guess who can't get their class two narcotics? Me. Now, I don't know if you've ever been on fentanyl, <clears throat> but it's pretty hairy stuff. And to stop fentanyl cold turkey is extremely dangerous. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I went to my pharmacist after I was off of fentanyl, after I went off cold turkey, and I never advise anybody doing this. It can change your life. <laughs> I went to the pharmacist and I explained to her what happened. You know, doctor went on vacation, extended vacation, nobody's going to give me fentanyl. I had to go off fentanyl cold turkey. She just went nuts. She said, do you fully understand that you could have died? Going off uh, fentanyl cold turkey, you, you could have died easily. That stuff is nothing to be fooled around with and she kept saying it's dangerous you could have died and I thought okay so it's pretty pretty nasty stuff so let me take you back to the three days when I came off of fentanyl so doctor said there's, there's no fentanyl so I go home 
what do I do? I curl up into a fetal position and I rock back and forth and almost wish for death because coming off of fentanyl cold turkey, um, don't try it. I would not advise it. My only saving grace is I had a couple of, I had about 10 low dose uh, morphine pills, 30 milligrams, that I took over the period of three days. But that was probably <clears throat> the most horrific thing that I've had to go through under the auspicious, the supervision of a doctor. So when they just, they just don't leave you with any fentanyl, what do you do? So this time I'm going to shop for a doctor, okay? I don't, I'm not going to go for any sloppy doctors that are going to get me hooked on fentanyl and then, not hooked, but put me on fentanyl and then just pull the plug and then leave me high and dry. And, and another thing about fentanyl was this. I talked to a doctor that was pretty crafty. He knew what he was doing. And the fentanyl, <clears throat> my original, my original injury <clears throat> made me twitch. It was back injury and neck injury. And it made me twitch about every 15, 20 seconds. Not about a medium twitch. <clears throat> to rock my body. When I went out in fentanyl, it increased it every 10 seconds and it was violent. And it was violent, like a violent twitch, like uh, every 10 seconds. Whether you were asleep or whether you were awake. And I said to one doctor, a specialist, pain specialist, and I said, I'm twitching every 10 seconds. I don't understand what's going on. He said, oh, dude, fentanyl is going to make you twitch like crazy. I said, what? Why isn't it in the literature? Why isn't anybody telling us? Why is it not in the literature in the fentanyl? He said, the reason why is because fentanyl was originally designed as a drug for terminally ill patients. And as long as you control the pain with fentanyl, you don't care about the twitch. They're dying. So they let them twitch, but they won't have any pain. You just keep giving them more fentanyl. But it appears in my case, the fentanyl made my injury worse. I was twitching every 15, 20 seconds mildly. When I was on fentanyl, it went to 10 seconds and really, really violent. Interesting to note. <clears throat> After I came off of fentanyl, I didn't twitch, I didn't shake, it went away. So, it probably proves that while I was on fentanyl, it was making my condition worse by going on fentanyl. Now, I've been on fentanyl and oxy, the doctors, okay, I've got chronic pain, we're trying to control it. They said, look, fentanyl, oxy, um, um, gabapentin, um, Tylenol 3 with codeine, all of these things that we're giving you, that, um, there was another one too, it's just like gabapentin, they had me maxed up on both. These are not working for you. You're still not able to control your chronic pain. So my pain specialist from the Surrey Pain Clinic said, you're going to try ganja. Let's put you on some cannabis, but treat it respectfully. I did, and 10 years ago I started using cannabis. Haven't looked back. I was on up to 12 different prescriptions for pain. Almost every single one of them was dedicated to pain control. 12. Now, <laughs> I'm on one low dose for my diabetes. <laughs> and if I watched my diet and got serious about my you know, exercise, I could just go right off of metformin, which I plan to do. But here's the thing. My experience with doctors, medical doctors, have not been the most pleasant, especially when they put you on, you know, fentanyl, the fentanyl thing. And when they leave you without a doctor, I think the next time we, we take a look at doctors, taking a look at doctors, we need to interview them. We need to turn the tables around just a little bit. I don't want you to get so, so desperate that you just take the first doctor that comes along. Maybe that's not a good idea. So tomorrow I'll go out and I'll get my prescription, I'll go to a clinic for my metformin. I don't need a doctor for that. I just go to a clinic and it's free and they give me my metformin. So I don't really need a doctor. My wife does. But when you do look for a doctor and you use cannabis, make sure that they are comfortable with your cannabis use. Otherwise, you're going to have nothing but a fight. And let me, let me give you a little story about that too. As of now, this is February 2023, <clears throat> your doctor, your medical doctor knows, knows nothing about cannabis. They do not study it in the College of Physicians. They don't. They don't. 
testing on this. Put this under pressure. They do not study cannabis in medical schools. Now, I have to tell you something very important, very important. Your cannabinoid system in your body is the second most important form of communication in your your entire body. What's the first? Your nervous system is right up on top. Your nervous system. That's the, the, that's the, 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 the biggest communication systems of your entire body. Right underneath that, cannabinoid system, baby. Guess what the cannabinoid system work, uh, uses? You're right, cannabis. That's what it's there for. It is a cannabinoid system vehicle. It's a, it's a conduit for the medicine. The cannabinoid system takes the cannabinoids from the cannabis plant and uses them. They're almost identical in nature to the THC found in the human body. So if your doctor, A, hasn't even studied it at all in medical school, how are they supposed to make a logical decision on your cannabis use if they don't know anything about it? It's like asking your medical doctor to work on your car as a mechanic. It's just nonsensical. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. <clears throat> I'd like to... I'm in the Fraser Valley. I, li- I live in the Fraser Valley, Abbotsford. And I have a, a, a pounding responsibility up here. And I want to I wanna go into the communities <clears throat> and I want to educate doctors. And I want to educate trauma therapists and psychologists and psychiatrists on how I use cannabis. And then they can understand that there is a responsible way to use cannabis and to work with your doctor. Figure it out. I was on 12 different prescriptions. Now I'm on one. All I did was use cannabis. And I'm having a delightful time with this Alien OG, this live resin stuff. This is really good stuff. It's actually the sap from the cannabis plant. And they scrape it off and they crystallize it and they freeze it. It is live resin. It's very, very different than just regular cannabis. So <clears throat> I'm going to go and find a doctor. Maybe. I don't need one, as I say. But the one that I do find is going to be a good fit for me. I want a young doctor. I uh, don't care if it's male or fe- uh, if the doctor's male or female. They just have to have, have an open mind as far as cannabinoids and cannabis goes. If you're not going to study the cannabinoid system in medical college, please do not dictate to your clients or your patients how to use cannabis properly because you don't know and if you've never tried it you don't know again and if you and if you're afraid of it you don't know and if you're about to lose your medical license because you're telling people to use cannabis that's going to scare you from from telling people to use cannabis it's a simple story there's a the pharmaceutical side and there's the cannabis side and they're continually fighting however now that they've legalized cannabis in both forms in BC for a couple of years now, you would be interested to see how many people are using cannabis for health. They use it for recreation too. How many people are using cannabis for health as opposed to going to doctors and getting prescriptions? I think that we should be able to put a fresh cannabis juicing program together where I juice the leaves in the fresh bud and also we can make some sore muscle rub. I make my own sore muscle rub. And if we can do two, those two things, make uh, sore muscle rub and juice the leaves of the cannabis plant, which is I want to do, I want to work with doctors and uh, patients, then we can get cannabis into the community in a, in a non-intoxicating way with all of the benefits instead of getting people high. So if you're looking for a doctor and you use cannabis, please tell them, to be cautious and to treat you with respect and dignity because cannabis, as I say, it's not a miracle plant and it's not a miracle cure, but it's the next best thing. I'm serious. Um, There are stories that I could tell. I'm going to have people in the studio that use cannabis that I personally help use cannabis and they can tell their story and and, uh, you can listen to them. Very, very powerful stuff. I've got friends that have uh, MS, Graves' disease, and she puts it on her forearms and all over her body, gives her tremendous relief. I have a friend that's battling cancer. He uses the uh, Alien OG, and he uses high THC, and he's doing well. So I, I want to congratulate you on if you've lost your doctor, a person in BC, look at it as a, like a um, silver lining in the cloud because you have an opportunity to work with a different doctor, and new doctors are coming in all the time. 
See if you can get a young, intelligent doctor that doesn't mind your use of cannabis. Now, now, with that said, it's your responsibility, the client's responsibility, to keep track of every time you use cannabis. So, what? Okay, so here, I have my pain report. And my pain report is called uh, Manage My Pain Pro. It's an app that you can get on your phone. But look at this. It gives you detailed every day. Every day you get on your smartphone and you just get on there and, and how often you medicate, what you eat, if you medicated, if you meditated, if you walked, the whole thing. And I've got like, I don't know, <laughs> how many pages I've got? Well, 65 pages and that just took a year. But when you work with your doctor, they're going to expect you to educate them on your cannabis use. So use a program like um, Manage My Pain Pro and you can print it out or you can actually send it to them. You can just email it right to them. And there's no, there's no back and forth discussion of how, how do you use your cannabis? It's all right there. It takes pressure off of you. You don't have to explain yourself so much, right? This is Rick Holland for Slightly Eccentric and the Diplomats of Dope. So I hope you're enjoying these podcasts because what I want to do is educate you. And if you're going to make a decision, like a major decision, uh, and as far as I have to get another doctor, interview them. Interview them this time. They don't have to interview you. you don't be desperate to get a doctor if you don't have you know, pressing health needs. Take your time. Take your time. It might take you a couple of months to find a doctor, but find the right one, the one that, that can work with you best. Rick Holland for Diplomats of Dope, uh, uh, um, slightly eccentric, and the Diplomats of Dope. We'll see you next show. Bye-bye.